what's up everybody and welcome to another episode of the motherland experience it's your girl nye here and today i have an amazing guest for you someone who is dear to my heart i'm going to be interviewing my mother verlicia king as some of you guys may know her by madame v aka silver fox lady and we're going to be taking you on a journey of her coming here almost seven years ago, going through her triumphs, going through her challenges, but most of all, talking about why the Most High led her here to Ghana and her calling on the motherland. So sit back, relax, and let me take you for a ride. What's up, everybody? I am so excited about this particular interview. You want to know why? Because of the lady that I'm sitting next to. I actually mm. feel sorry for this lady. You want to know why? Because she's had to put up with my shenanigans for almost 30 years. Can you believe that? <laughs> <laughs> so please, help me welcome my wonderful mother, Madame V, to the show. Thank you, my darling. <laughs> it's been tough for almost 30 years, but it was worth it. Thank you, sweetie. Oh, don't mention it. Thank you so much for coming on the channel. It's it was my truly pleasure. an honor. It my really pleasure. is. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Oh. You've been here almost seven years, going on seven years. I'm good. Oh, I mean, mm -hmm. who could beat that, right? Who right. could beat that? So please, can you tell our lovely viewers where you're from? I'm from California. I'm mm -hmm. actually from, born and raised in the San Fernando Valley, Los Angeles County. And um, like I said, I've been here in Accra for almost seven years, going on seven years now. Wow. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that's really awesome because some people don't make it that long. Some don't. <laughs> some don't. And I wondered from time to time, but I made it. We made it. Yes, we made it we together. Did. We made it together. Mm -hmm. We made it together. So can you tell us kind of like why Ghana? What started kind of take us on the journey of what led you to Ghana? Well, um, it was probably about, I don't know, maybe about t we've been here almost seven years, maybe about mm -hmm. 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, my father talked to me, and when I say that, I say my heavenly father mm -hmm. spoke to me and told me it was time to leave the States and for me to come to the continent mm -hmm. and specifically to Ghana. Mm. I knew nothing about Ghana, okay, right. as you know that. Yes. I didn't know anything about Ghana, mm -hmm. had never been here before, didn't know anyone here, mm. just blindly moved here because I was led in my spirit to wow. come here. Mm -hmm. Wow. So would you say that you were in preparation mode, kind of all those 10 years of kind of like take us through kind of what led to the moment? Of well, I think what led to the moment mm -hmm. is me discovering who we are as a people, mm -hmm. uh, finding out that we come from the chosen line. Yes that we are from the tribes mm -hmm. and one of the tribes in particular. Mm -hmm. And when I came into that realization, mm -hmm. that's when I began to discover more and more and more. I started learning more and more. Mm -hmm. um, I, the, the Ruach just started to just teach me and guide me and direct me. Uh -huh. And it ended up directing me, the spirit ended up directing me here. I had no plans on moving <laughs> no, guys. to the continent. I wanted to visit, <laughs> mm -hmm. but I didn't have plans on moving. But when that came in, I was like, okay, I know I had got a bad title or right? whatever. Like, but, I hear you know right, I didn't think I heard it correctly. <laughs> mm -hmm. But as time went on, I went through two years of preparation mm -hmm. before we moved here in 2017. So in 2015, right. I went through that preparation mode to 2017. Mm, well, describe the emotions of kind of through that time and even you coming here for the first time. What did you feel? Overwhelmed. Mm. I felt overwhelmed what way? because I never thought I would move to the continent. I mean, mm. it was it was beautiful. It was yeah. scary. Yeah. OK, yeah. it was very, very scary <laughs> and it was intimidating. Mm -hmm. It was bewildering mm -hmm. because coming into another culture, another way of doing things, mm -hmm. it was bewildering and yeah. it was intimidating. Yeah. It was. I I'll never forget the first time we stepped off the plane. 
Yes. And yes. it's like, okay, we're we're done. We're through. We're finished. With with America and we're starting a new chapter. A you know, chapter, it's like a month a, you know, month prior we lost, you know, my, right. you know, mama, you right. know, my grandma, her mother, um, caring for her for almost eight years and mm -hmm. then having to almost still dealing with the grief of that. Right. But having to put that aside. And we moved one month after she passed away and I could not grieve at all mm -hmm. because I knew what my instructions were. Mm -hmm. But when I when we got here, everything <laughs> came down. Came. Everything came down. But wow. I knew this was something that, that I needed to do. And I was so pleased because when you came to me, because I gave you an option, if you yes. remember. Yes, you did. You came to mm -hmm. me and you said, father told me to come with you mm -hmm. and I was overjoyed because some people come here and they don't have their families with them they don't have their children with them they leave them behind and I couldn't even imagine that mm -hmm. I was prepared to do it mm. well, when as you, you say, know yeah when you hear yes from the most high you have to do it you have to you have to do it but I was blessed where he spoke to you too yeah. and told you to to come so that's a blessing yeah, I was told to be a support system to you. And you are. And I try to be. I try You're to be. Amazing. So what's one word to describe Ghana for you? Different. Ooh, different, uh, okay. guys. It's different. different for her. It's different. So different in what way? I, I mean, you have to, you know, keep in mind that mm -hmm. you're going from one culture to another. Right. You know, mm -hmm. and that takes navigating. Mm -hmm. that takes getting used to. Mm -hmm. So it's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's not, it's not as easy as you think it is mm -hmm. because again, that's, that's going to any other different culture. Exactly. You're in some, you're, you're in a different environment. Mm -hmm. You're in a different way of thinking. You're in a different way of doing things, different mm -hmm. systems. So it, it can be, it, it's, a lot to navigate through, but you can do it. <laughs> of course you can. Mm -hmm. With the most I help, you definitely can Absolutely. Do it. So have you been to any other African country other than Ghana? Um, I, I've been to to Egypt mm -hmm. to, and to Zambia. Okay. So I'd like to do some more traveling though throughout the continent. Yeah. Absolutely. There's a lot much more to see. It's a lot more to see. I want to be see. your traveling buddy. Absolutely. <laughs> and a lot more people to meet. Mm -hmm. A lot of people A lot to more meet. culture to soak mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. How was that experience for you being in Egypt and Zambia for the time? Mm. Egypt was really interesting. It was. It was cool, okay. guys. It was say. really, really interesting. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, very historical. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're just kind of, to me, it was living and breathing that history. Mm -hmm. And we were there for, how long were we, we there? We were there for a nine day cruise. Nine days. Mm -hmm. Okay, we nine, nine days. days. And it was almost my dream though, to go to, to Egypt. Yeah. That was my dream trip. And being able to do it, it, that was cool. It was awesome. I'll never forget when you came to me one day and you were like, let's share, let's go to Egypt. Why not? And I was like, what? Where'd this come from? Like, you know, is my, am I dreaming? You're right. And right. it was it was awesome. Yeah, it was. It really was. It was, it was awesome. So mm -hmm. there's a lot more to explore. Mm -hmm. So with you being here for um for going on seven years, mm -hmm. what has been, I guess, what has Ghana taught you about you? That I'm resilient. Mm. That I can get through and navigate through different situations. Yeah. It's taught me a lot about me. It's mm -hmm. taught me that I can expand even farther than I thought that mm -hmm. I would be able to do. To do. Uh, it's taught me a lot. It's taught wow. me a lot. Mm -hmm. Wow. You know, kind of like some people never get to experience that. No. And it's always a blessing when you can grow. Mm -hmm. And even mm -hmm. experience another culture. Absolutely, you know absolutely. Because with us being here, mm. we have really expanded a lot. Yeah. I yeah. mean, when you we, say oh, that, yeah, definitely, absolutely, Me we have definitely here expanded a lot. <laughs> it's a, you know, and enough. you know, things mm -hmm. we've experienced, things that I honestly didn't think we would experience, such as going to the slave dungeons. Ooh. That was something that I always wanted to do, mm -hmm. but I didn't know if I would be able to do it. When we got there, it was surreal for me. 
Yeah. It was a surreal experience. Wow, take me to that time. It's like, um, tell me the emotions. I have an idea, but I, oh, I want Oh my goodness, if you remember, I had to step away from the tour group because mm -hmm. it, I just couldn't handle it. It was, it was hard. It really was going through seeing the, and you know, I think everyone has said this, but it's true. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, seeing the environment, the smells are still there. Yeah. You know, and just thinking to yourself, I had mm -hmm. an ancestor that was here, maybe even two, we don't know, that was there, mm -hmm. possibly at that dungeon, but we went to the two. Yes. Um, and it was just, it was overwhelming. It was overwhelming. Yeah. It's, it a, it's something I'll never forget. It was kind of like the energy that you felt mm -hmm. being there. It's still there. It's like after 400 plus years later, you still feel that energy. That energy is still there. And it, it is. It's overwhelming. And But at the same time, I felt honored. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, it's, a, it's an honor. Mm -hmm. You know, just like, I guess, the prayer that our ancestors pray. To, for us to come back. For us to return, and, and here we are. And here we are, mm -hmm. you know? So that's really the beauty of it all. Absolutely. You know, that's the beauty of it all. Mm -hmm. So kind of being here, could you mention like any triumphs? What has been like your triumphant period of being here in God? Oh my goodness. I've had a lot of triumphs, mm -hmm. actually. <laughs> I really, really have. And, and this is kind of segueing me mm -hmm. into something else. I think my biggest triumph is being able to utilize the gift mm -hmm. that Father has given to me in terms of bringing people together. Yes. yes. And that's something that I've been able to do. And mm -hmm. I didn't think I'd do it here. I did in the States. Right. But mm -hmm. I didn't think that I would have the um, pleasure mm -hmm. of doing it here. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. So kind of with you bringing people together, and having that calling that the Most High has given upon you mm -hmm. to kind of bridge the gap, to bring other people together um, with the amazing organization that you have, mm -hmm. Diaspora HQ. You, I can see you have a burden for, you know, Diaspora's people coming here because we were in the same, same position almost seven years later. Mm -hmm. And it's important to know when you're coming to another country that you're, that you're cared for. You know what I'm saying? So please, can you go into what Diaspora H, um, HQ, we call it DHQ for short, but Diaspora Headquarters is all about in the birth of it. Absolutely. Um, first, I need to go back a little mm. bit. <laughs> when, I, when I first got here, I didn't know why Father told me to come to Ghana. Mm -hmm. And I kept asking, I kept fleecing, inquiring, why Ghana? <laughs> yeah. You know, there are 54 countries here. Why mm -hmm. did why you Ghana? send me to Ghana? Mm -hmm. And I had to wait for that answer. Mm -hmm. I waited about four and a half to five years for that answer wow. to come through. I kept asking because mm -hmm. I didn't understand why I was in Ghana per se. Mm -hmm. Well, he <laughs> answered me and he answered me big time. Mm -hmm. Diaspora headquarters, which I'm very, very proud of, is a organization of diasporans that are committed mm -hmm. to creating an environment of community mm -hmm. in the diasporan community. Mm -hmm. Because when I first, when it was first put in my spirit, mm -hmm. I was kind of in a headspace of why aren't we more unified just as a community of people? Mm -hmm. Why mm -hmm. is that? I, I, you know, I know a lot of diasporans, but I didn't see a, really a sense of strong community mm -hmm. with the diasporan community. Yeah. I also didn't mm -hmm. see a structure put into place where people that are coming here mm -hmm from the diaspora, whether they're from the States or the UK, mm -hmm. you know, Canada, mm -hmm. the Caribbean, yeah. where we did not set up an environment for them mm -hmm. to be able to welcome them and help them to actually navigate through mm -hmm. some of the pitfalls that we went through, because I went through a lot of pitfalls. 
there were a lot of things that I needed to learn. And mm -hmm. I kind of, for the most part, learned certain things by trial and error. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that caused the situation where I was hemorrhaging money. Oh, that's a big one. Okay, yeah. hemorrhaging money, just going through a lot of things that I didn't really need to go through if there was someone there to guide me and navigate me through. Yes. So I felt that burden in my spirit. Mm -hmm. So I started reaching out to a few people. They answered the call. Mm -hmm. And that was the birth of Diaspora Headquarters. Wow. We are there to create an environment of community mm -hmm. within the diasporan community. Because another thing that is really a little bit of an issue mm -hmm is I was putting together an event for Diaspora HQ, a huge event. Mm -hmm. And I was going to different venues. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, those venues were owned by different nations of people. Mm -hmm. I couldn't mm -hmm. really get a good venue that was yeah. Ghanaian owned. And I sure couldn't find one that was owned by a diaspora. Yeah. So you were with me. I had a meltdown. Yeah. And yeah, guys, I, I did. In the, in the, the middle of a big hotel <laughs> here, I had a meltdown. And I was like, why don't we have something? Now, there are businesses mm -hmm. here, of course, mm -hmm. that are diaspora known. We're sitting in one now. Yes. Jerk soul. Jerk soul. Mm -hmm. um, but what I didn't see mm -hmm. is anything there that had the stamp that diasporans are here. Mm. Do you understand what no, I mean? No, I totally get you. That, you know, this is what we have done mm -hmm. as a community. Mm -hmm. Didn't see that. Mm -hmm. I still have not seen that. So that's why members of Diaspora HQ, we are, the members of Diaspora headquarters are amazing. I love they each are. and every one of mm -hmm. them because we've created environment where we're, we're, we're getting ready to move some stuff. We're getting ready to do some mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. We don't have a membership fee mm -hmm. because I don't do that. And that's important. It's not about the money. <laughs> yeah. Okay, it's not about the money. It's about the bringing together of a community without having a lot of drama, exactly. without having mm -hmm. all that stuff that gets in the way of success mm -hmm. of an organization. So with that mm -hmm. in mind, Diaspora has so, HQ has so many different facets mm -hmm. from, we even have a security uh, project mm -hmm. where okay. if there's anything threatening mm -hmm. that's going on in Ghana, People of DHQ mm -hmm. that are part of ThreatCon, that's what we call mm -hmm. it, they will know this is something we need to keep an eye on because mm -hmm. this could possibly be a problem to us. Mm -hmm. We just introduced another piece, mm -hmm. which is called Bantu Healing Chat Room. Ooh. That is a therapy piece. Wow, okay. That's a therapy mm -hmm. piece because what we have noticed is we have a tendency to take baggage from mm. the West and we bring it to the continent. Yeah, yeah. Which stands in the way of us connecting. Mm -hmm. So what we're doing is we have therapy groups where we can start to heal from the trauma mm -hmm. because we've undergone a lot of trauma yeah, coming from has. the West. Mm -hmm. I don't think a lot of people really understand that from other places, mm -hmm. but we've undergone a great deal of trauma. Trauma is in our DNA. And it's okay to say it because we're not mm -hmm. responsible for that trauma. Mm -hmm. So it's, I can say, yes, I've mm -hmm. gone through some trauma. You know, just being, just from driving in a, a police car getting behind me. Yeah. And I see that car in my mm. rearview mirror and I start to get a little nervous because he might pull me over. I may not make it home. I may not make it yeah. home. I was talking to one brother not too mm -hmm. long ago, and he got emotional about yeah. that. That's trauma. It's very traumatizing. You know? Mm -hmm. And then just going through the rejection that we've gone through. Mm -hmm. Being in the West. Because that's not our home. England no. isn't our home. America is not our home. Mm -hmm. Canada is not our home. These places are not, they're not our home. No. They're the land of our captivity. Exactly. But that's not our home. Mm. So this is the reason why we need to pull. We need to pull together mm. and we need to heal. 
So we need to heal back to this continent. Mm, I love that, kind of like heal back to Africa. Heal back to Africa. Heal back to Africa. And that's really important because we haven't really addressed, you know, because mental health is just as important as your physical health. Absolutely. So, and we haven't really, we've gotten away from it but have we really confronted some of the issues that we bring with us? That's right. You know, that could hinder us from connecting and even connecting with other people here, right. you know, on the continent or here right. in Ghana, mm -hmm. you know, so that's really important. And the things that DHQ are doing is really needed, you know. Um, I'm proud of DHQ. I'm yeah. proud of Diaspora Headquarters. Mm -hmm. I really and, am. And you know, what, what I love too, is that part of it, you know, you even have um, on the website, um, the name that businesses that are, you know, vetted that other people can go to, Absolutely. you know, that is, you know, that is even beneficial, you know, to people here. You know, and that's very mm -hmm. true because we do have our directory, mm -hmm. our business directory, which is getting really extensive mm -hmm. of diaspora and own business here, businesses here because the truth of the matter is, is we don't even know about each other's businesses that are here. No. Not all not of all them. Of them. Mm -hmm. When we can support each other's businesses. And then, as you said, mm -hmm. we have a contractor's uh, portion of the website mm -hmm. of Ghanaian businesses, mm -hmm. like you said, that have been vetted. Mm -hmm. People who are good at what they do. Yeah. And that way you, that prevents you from doing what? Hemorrhaging money. Uh, that's a biggie, guys. And that's you, a really we need that. Mm -hmm. You gotta have that. No, we do, mm -hmm. we do. So kind of with um, DHQ, it's kind of extensive. Yes. You know what I'm saying? It's extensive and it's something that is definitely needed. Absolutely. And kind of with that, with even with your channel, with um, your YouTube channel, mm -hmm. with Madame V, uh, yes. with the YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. Kind of talk just a little bit, you know, about that. My channel is very important to me. That was another thing that father told me to do. It took me a while to do it, but mm -hmm. I finally did it. And it's really dealing with dias diasporans that are planning on coming, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. to, to the continent. Naturally, of course, Ghana, I'm really talking yeah. a lot about Ghana, but the spiritual aspect of that, mm -hmm. because you're going to, you're going to, oh, you're going to be tested here. Yeah. You're yeah. going to be tested mm -hmm. here and you have to, our faith walk is going to have to change coming here. Mm -hmm. Where we have to truly mm. walk by faith and not by sight. <laughs> so truly, many times. truly, guys. truly. Okay. We have been in situations, <laughs> Nigeria and I, mm -hmm. where we our money has gotten down to nothing, probably of three or four times. Mm. Yes. But I and we together had to really walk by faith because I kept in mind you didn't tell me to come all this way, mm -hmm. and I was obedient and did it for you to just leave me. No, that's not the type of father we serve. No. So mm -hmm. it, with the channel, I talk a lot about the free fall of coming here. Mm -hmm. It's almost like a free fall. Yeah, yeah. Where your faith has got, you got to get in the trunk of the car, not in the back, <laughs> the back seat and let him drive. Please be in the back. <laughs> no, I, you can't be in the back because then you can mm -hmm. see things that are passing by. I don't want to see anything. Yeah. Just close the trunk mm -hmm. and let me just go to where it is I'm supposed to go. You drive right. the car. Right. You exactly. direct me. So, um, Madame V mm -hmm. is, is also a labor of love. Mm -hmm. It is, it really, really is. And, and a lot of people that have subscribers to my channel, mm -hmm. they have come here and we're Aww. friends and they are in a diaspora headquarters That's and it's, it, yeah. it's, it's really cool. It's, cool. it's, it's just turned into a really cool situation. Aww. Well, see now, cause some that just shows you not all the time will father tell you right then and there why you're doing something, no. but you have to trust him and know he's got you and he will reveal it to you in time. In time. And that kind of shows with you of why you were sent here, you know, to Ghana for the time being. So I'm going to, the last question for you, what advice would you give to anybody that's coming here that, you know, the Most High has spoken to of leaving the West? What would you tell them? What advice would I give What them? advice would you give to them? Number one, mm -hmm. I would tell them to take their time. Mm -hmm. It's, um, 
Ghana is the type of place you can't jump and run and just jump into things. Mm, mm -hmm. Because you can mess up. Mm -hmm. You can mess up. Take your time, explore the space, get to know mm -hmm. a little bit of the culture yeah. before you just jump in and start doing things because the system is totally different. It is. It's, it's totally not different. Not in the West anymore. No, um, it's totally mm -hmm. different. So my advice, take mm -hmm. your time. Come, yes, mm -hmm. but take your time. Yeah. Take your time, it's okay. You know what I'm saying? It's okay. To okay. take your time. <laughs> Listen to advice, mm -hmm. okay, of people who have been here for a while. Like, mm -hmm. for instance, with us, we've been here, what, six, almost seven mm -hmm. years. I consider us like a six or seven year old. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, a child. Mm -hmm. We're still learning. We're still learning a lot. I listen to people that have been here 20, 30 years. Yeah. You know, if I've only been here a month, how, how will I know? A, a, a child that's a month old or a baby might put their hand on the stove and burn mm -hmm. their hand. But as a seven-year-old, mm -hmm. I know not to do that because I might get right. burned. But as a 20-year-old, mm -hmm. oh my God, you mm -hmm. learn and you know so much more. Exactly. So that's number one. Number two, watch your money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You've got to look at your currency in the currency of where you are, mm -hmm. not where you're coming from. So please don't spend your pounds or dollars or whatever <laughs> and look at, oh, it only costs like $5 to do this. Right, not but when you're moving here. Not when you're moving mm -hmm. here. And if you're visiting, okay. Right. Okay, mm -hmm. but if you're moving here, you've got to look at your money in CDs. Mm -hmm. You must look at it. We can attest we can to that. Attest to that. It. that happened to us. That's the first time we mm -hmm. ran out of money. Because we were looking at our money in dollars. And we went to the bank account, and it's like, oh, okay. It was $76. So, and it's like, okay, we just got here. We hadn't even been here yet. So it's really important. Mm -hmm. It's very important. Well, thank mm -hmm. you so much for that advice because those are some pitfalls that some of our people, when they're coming here, that they can't fall into. You know, so, I mean, I love this conversation. It is been awesome. We can awesome. have so much more. Of course we can. We always chitty chat. So if anybody wants to get in touch with you, how could they get in touch with you? Um, well, you can get in touch with me through um, DHQ. Mm -hmm. DHQ at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you can also get in touch with me through the website, mm -hmm. DHQ.com. And I think those are the only ways right now. <laughs> we'll put, listen guys, we'll put everything in the description <laughs> box, all of her socials, even, you know, for those of you that are interested in Diaspora um, headquarters, you can reach out. We'll put everything in the description box Absolutely. for you. And Absolutely. again, thank you so much. You're welcome, so, darling. This is my queen. Mm -hmm. And thank you guys for tuning in. And please don't forget to like, mm -hmm. comment, subscribe, and please share this information with others. Until next time. Bye. Bye.